Benguet State University presents the TV show that brings you teaching information, principles, research, theories, strategies, methodologies, the EdTech TV. Magandang gabi, EdTech viewers. Once again, thank you for being with us. Because of your support, we are number one in the Philippines. Yes, partner. Kaya naman ang etika ng programa ito ay magdulot ng iyong ikauunlad. Especially to our value TV viewers, no other than the Prof. Ed Class, Batch 2020-21. Last time, our program has revolved around the dramatized experience in teaching, wherein we emphasize that students get attracted, interested, and affected if teaching is dramatic. Pinag-usapan din natin ang iba't ibang uri nito gaya ng pageant, formal play, tableau, hands to mind, puppets, at role-playing. Ngayon, pag-uusapan natin ang isa pang makabuluhang strategiya sa pagtuturo. Pero bago ang lahat, kami ay may palalabas na video na ginawa ng ating EdTech TV staff para sa inyo. By the way, ang unang limang taong makapagkuha ng tamang sagot ay makakag-receive ng 5 peso pasa load via GCash. Ang pinakaunang Tamang makakakuha naman ng sagot ay syempre may additional 5 peso load. Ready na ba kayo? Alam kong ready na kayo pero mamaya namin sasabihin kung ano ang mga tanong. So, maging mapagpasil. Paano ang tamang pagtapon ng face mask? Maghugas muna ng kamay. Maingat na hubarin ng face mask mula sa likod ng tainga palabas ng mukha. Iwasan mahawakan ng dumi sa loob ng face mask. Tupiin ito ng makailang beses at erolyo. Gamitin ang nakalaylay na hawakan, talian ang natuping face mask. Gupitin ang gitna upang di na muling magamit. Hugasan at punasan ng alkohol ang gunting pagkatapos. Kumuha ng gamit na papel para balutin ito ng maayos. Itapon sa tamang sisidlan o tapunan para hindi makahawa. Muling maghugas ng kamay. So ayan ang ating video. Ano nga ba ang tanong? Ayan, makikita niyo po na naka-flash sa inyong screen ang tanong. Sabi dyan, What did the cartoon characters do in the video? By the way, the video was created by the EdTech TV staff and producers para po tayo ay turuan ng tamang pagtapon ng face mask. Lalo na ngayon at balik GCQ na ulit ang Benguet dahil sa tumataas ng kaso ng COVID-19. Sana naman matapos na ang ating suliranin sa pandemya ito nang bumalik na ang lahat sa old normal. The winners by the way will be notified after our program. Okay partner? Balik tayo sa ating topic. Ano nga ba ang ating pag-uusapan ngayon? Okay, our topic for today is about demonstration and teaching. We are lucky because we have our dear experts from ABC ABCCBA University, Korean Sanchez. Hello everyone! I'm so honored that you invited me today as one of your speakers for demonstration in teaching and learning process. I do hope that after our discussion, our viewers especially our teachers and future teachers would be able to properly conduct demonstration by observing these principles. So I will be showing you a PowerPoint presentation of my discussion. First, let us define what is demonstration. Like role-playing and pantomime of dramatized experiences, Demonstration is very handy. It does not require elaborate preparation, yet it is very effective like other instructional materials if done properly. 
demonstration is defined as a public showing emphasizing the salient merits, utility, efficiency, and others of an article or a product. For example, if there is a new model of a cell phone for Oppo or iPhone, of course, the product endorser will highlight its striking advantages by showing how. The endorser will likewise show the new phone's uniqueness and usefulness. In teaching, it is showing how a thing is done and emphasizing the salient merits, utility, and efficiency of a concept, a method, a process, or attitude. As a method, it is used to communicate an idea with the use of visual aids such as flip charts, posters, PowerPoint presentations, videos, and other visual aids. Hence, it is a process of teaching someone how to do or make something in a step-by-step -step process. Like what was shown in the earlier video, you show the action how it is being done while you are telling what to do. Hence, in the demonstration, there is an audience, a process of speaking, in the process of showing to convince the audience. We have to remember that demonstration method has an end or finish product. The key to a good demonstration is for the audience to be able to go home and do what you taught them. As a guiding principle, you establish rapport first. How? Of course, greet your audience and make them feel at ease by your warmth and sincerity. Then stimulate their interest by making your demonstration and yourself interesting. Do not forget to sustain their attention. Basically, it is the introduction process. Here, you greet your audience and immediately you introduce yourself. To draw and sustain their attention, you can use gimmick through a personal incident or your story that you wanted to share which is connected to the demo. You can also use poster, talk about a saying, riddle, poem, skit, a song, a dramatic or shocking statement. Also, you can use or you can ask them questions, make a gesture, or show a completed product. Second guiding principle is to avoid COIK. COIK stands for clear only if known. What does this mean? As an expert and effective demonstrator, you should assume that your audience know nothing or knows a little about what you intended to demonstrate. This indication will make you thorough, clear, and detailed in your demonstration, even to the point of facing the risk of being repetitive. Finally, watch for key points. What are these key points? They are the ones that at which an error is likely to be made, the places at which many people stumble, and where the knacks and tricks of the trade are especially important. The good demonstrator recognizes possible stumbling blocks to learners and highlights them in some way. Along the process, it would be best to discuss the main points and thoroughly explain each step. Make your explanation simple to be understood properly. If you have any questions and clarifications, please type in the chat box and we will try to answer all your questions later. Thank you! Thank you so much, Ma'am Kuri and Sanchez, for that in-depth discussion. Yes, partner. We shouldn't forget all the three major guiding principles of demonstration method, which are establish rapport, avoid COIK, and watch for key points. Muli, maraming salamat Ma'am Korean Sanchez for that enriching discussion. Bago natin ipagpatuloy, narito muna ang isang patalastas.
Connecticut State University presents the TV show that brings you teaching information, principles, research, theories, strategies, methodologies, EdTech TV. Welcome back to our program. You are still watching with us at EdTech TV. Napakaswerte talaga natin ngayon because our next guest will be from the family member of the late philosophers and experts like James Brown and Edgar Dale, the authors of the audiovisual instructional materials and audiovisual methods in teaching. Yes, yes, tama po kayo sa inyong narinig. We are lucky that the family members of the late philosophers and experts, particularly in educational technology, are here with us to share and discuss the methods in planning and preparing demonstrations, points in proceeding to demonstrations, and evaluating the classroom evaluation. Gaya na sinabi namin kanina, mga TV viewers, Maswerte tayo dahil narito ang ilan sa mga kamag-anak ng namayapa nating educational technology experts and philosophers. First and foremost, we are pleased to introduce to you the granddaughter of James W. Brown, no other than Regina Brown. Good day, ma'am. Good day to you as well. Thank you for this great opportunity. Thank you for inviting me here so I can share the knowledge shaped by my grandfather. Actually, my grandfather was born on September 18, 1913. He died at the age of 74 on his birth date in 1987. I am humbled to share to you that he published 95 works in 408 publications, encompassing 5 languages, and 6,289 library holdings. His work served as guide to many educators and book writers in developing their educational media. To start, Please allow me to share my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, in planning and preparing for demonstrations, James W. Brown, my grandfather, emphasized that we should be specific with our objectives. We have six guide questions for this. Number one, what are our objectives? Good learning objectives are not simply a list of topics to be covered in a course. Rather, they should illustrate the skills and applicable knowledge that the audience should master. Our objectives should likewise communicate clearly our end goal and what are expected from our audience. Example, after the demonstration, the students should be able to perform the steps in dancing tango. Number two, how does your class stand with respect to these objectives? Meaning, how is the progress of your class with respect to your objectives? For these reasons, learning objectives are a central strategy in proficiency-based learning, which refers to systems of instruction, assessment, grading, and academic reporting that are based on students' demonstrations, understanding of the knowledge, and skills they are expected to learn before they progress to the next lesson. Number three, is there a better way to achieve your ends? Meaning, are there simple and more effective way to achieve our goal? Prior to the implementation of our demonstrations, we should have Plan A and Plan B, so that if we have seen that Plan A is ineffective, then we should shift to Plan B. Like what we have said a while ago, lesson goals help us measure whether or not we achieve our learning objectives. We can determine this by asking our students or our audience. We can also prepare some sort or set of metrics. Number four, do you have access to all necessary materials and equipment to make the demonstration? This pertains to the equipments or things to be used in a demonstration. Are the needed materials accessible? Is it easy to find? Is it possible? If not, do we have alternatives for this? So for a demonstration to be effective, we also need to consider all the materials needed. For example, in a cooking show, how can you demonstrate the process of cooking pinikpikan? Maybe you can use your imagination. But as we have learned in the previous 
Experience is still the best teacher. Number 5. Are you familiar with the sequence and content of the proposed demonstration? Before setting up a demonstration, as much as possible, master its content. Familiarize yourself so you will not be lost in the process. A demonstration is a step-by-step -step process, yet you should see to it that you do not omit important things while performing demonstration, because one mistake can ruin the desired outcome or goal. For example, in solving mathematical problems, how can you come up with a correct solution if you omitted an equation? Another example, in baking a cake, you forgot to put eggs. What will be the structure of the cake? How will it taste? Number 6. Are the time limits realistic? Is the demonstration time consuming? Is the topic being demonstrated possibly be finished in just an hour or less? Or will it take the product to be finished for 2 days, weeks, or the worst is months? So in choosing a topic to be demonstrated, time limit is also being considered. Also, to give way for the learners to create their own product. Example in a dance session being prepared for a big event. The steps cannot be learned in just less than an hour, so you need to give time for the dance instructor to teach the dancers. Then vice versa, there should be also be an allotted time for the dancers to learn the steps. Thank you very much for deeply discussing those approaches in preparing demonstration math. Indeed, preparation and planning is very crucial to attain success in our every endeavor. Further, here is the guide in performing demonstration by Edgar Dale. Set the tone for good communication. You must have a good rapport on the way how you communicate. Next, keep your demonstration simple. Third, do not wander from the main ideas. Do not go away from the topic or any ideas that you should demonstrate. Fourth, check to see that your demonstration is being understood. Fifth, do not hurry your demonstration. You should take your time. Sixth, do not drag out the demonstration. Seven, summarize as you go along and provide a concluding summary. And lastly, hand out written materials at the conclusion. So those are the enriching guides in performing demonstration. Let us unveil the face of our next guest speaker after the break.
Benguet State University presents the TV show that brings you teaching information, principles, research, theories, strategies, methodologies, viewers, our next discussion is about evaluating classroom demonstration. Many philosophers argue that evaluation is very important to enhance our performance in the classroom. It leads us, the teachers, to improve their performance and improve their effectiveness. Thus, in return, it leads to the improvement of the students' learning. So for tonight, let's welcome our guest Elena Day. Good evening, Mom. Thank you and good day, everyone. A while ago, my sister-in-law discussed the important points in performing a demonstration. Now, I am going to elaborate the evaluation of classroom demonstration, which was designed by my father. For those who do not know yet, the name of my father is Edgar Dale. He was born in April 27, 1900 at Benson, Minnesota. He developed the cone of experience also known as learning pyramid. In the pyramid, demonstration is fourth from the bottom. My father emphasized that in evaluating classroom demonstration, the following questions should be asked. First, was your demonstration adequately and skillfully prepared? So dito po, Clear po ba ang desired behavioral outcome? Pangalawa, did you follow the step-by-step -step plan? So, did you make use of additional materials appropriate to your purposes like pictures, diagrams, models, or slides? Third, was the demonstration itself correct? So, yung explanation niyo po ba, simple lang, para maintindihan ng mga estudyante? Fourth, did you keep checking to see all your students were concentrating on what you were doing? Next, could every person see and hear? Next one is, did you help student to their own generalizing? Next one, did you take enough time to demonstrate the key points? And did you review and summarize the key points? Did your student participate in what you were doing by asking thoughtful questions at the appropriate time? And lastly, did your evaluation of student learning indicate that your demonstration achieved its purpose? Thank you for that comprehensive discussion, Ms. Elena Day. Ayun po mga kaibigan ang topic natin ngayong gabi. We hope you enjoyed listening and at the same time viewing our program. But before we finally end, we just wanted you to remember that demonstration is good if audio and visual are appropriately combined. As a summary, it is not enough that the teacher talks. To be effective, his or her demonstration must be accompanied by visuals. In the actual conduct of demonstration, we should ensure that we, first, get and sustain the interest of our audience, second, keep our demonstration simple, focused and clear, third, do not hurry nor drag out the demonstration, fourth, check if the demonstration was understood, fifth, conclude with a summary, and lastly, hand out written materials at the end of the demonstration. Again, thank you very much for tuning with us. We hope that you have learned a lot. This is your anchor, Judy. And your anchor, Lina. And take TV. The Benguet State University presents the TV show that brings you teaching 
information, principles, research. Theories Strategies Methodologies The EdTech TV